The following program is produced by Marshfield Community Television. Today we are celebrating some special events. I actually have two older sisters who are celebrating a birthday. Uh, unfortunately, my one um, sister is deceased, but her twin sister will be celebrating a birthday today. I won't mention the number because she'd probably prefer me not to. <laughs> She's um, about 14 years older than me, so if you know how old I am, you know how old she is. Yeah, do the math. Do the math. Um, but then we are also celebrating our videographer Brianna's birthday a day early. She's going to be a certain number tomorrow, but she's still very young. Yeah, we're not going to talk that so number either. In honor of Brianna, we're going to make her uh, a dessert for her birthday. And we mm -hmm. have actually made an angel food cake with a mm -hmm. chocolate filling one other time for her birthday. But this year, we're going to make an angel food cake, and we told her about seven minute a boiled frosting which she had a chance to taste at one of our last you know things that, that we were doing yeah. and we gave her a sample so she thought that would be kind of an interesting birthday cake so that's what we're going to do so we're going to show you how to make a seven minute boiled frosting which was what i really grew up with at home i don't know if you ever had boiled frosting i think my mom did it a few times but i'm not okay. don't recall just when but probably for, for probably for a birthday special, a special birthday. occasion yeah right. so right. Um, it's really pretty easy to make and it looks elegant, it's light and fluffy, and so we're going to go with it. Okay. So we're going to start by using a double boiler, and right now the water is already boiling, or getting ready to boil it on is the boiling. stove. Yep, we it's doing? boiling. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's all set. So Gary is going to break two eggs, and he's actually using his special eggs for Brianna. My these are, these are his, his eggs that he uses for breakfast. So... Um, Unless you're having him fix breakfast, this is the only time that we generally use these eggs because they are fresh and good and Pull out the basket. just a really nice Thank egg. You. Okay, so while he's separating, we have a, a um, not yet a, not. a stainless separator, so you can put okay, that one. egg in there maybe. Those okay, there. so I'm going to put in one and a half cups of granulated sugar quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and if you don't have cream of tartar in your kitchen you could use one and a half teaspoons of uh, light carol syrup or a light corn syrup five tablespoons of water and two egg whites okay and then I've got my, my my stand mixer, which I take the, the mixer part off of the stand, but if you have a hand mixer, you can also either use a hand mixer or a whisk. I think a whisk is going to be a little bit more labor intensive because you're going to be beating this for seven minutes. But to start, we're just going to use the, the mixer just to stir up everything until everything is, is well um, incorporated before we put it on the stove, okay? got that all mixed together and now we're taking this to our pan of boiling water <clears throat> and in the <clears throat> using the um, double mixer you I mean the, I'm sorry the double boiler you have your water boiling and it's it's just low enough so that it's going to be boiling the whole time you're mixing your um, frosting but you don't have the water actually touching the pan it's just the boiling water that's coming up so we're going to plug this in over here, and let me check my recipe here. And see where the beater. So you can just beat it. Seven minutes, right? Seven minutes, right? I'm going to put so the timer put the on. Timer on, and we're going to start. You just like to beat a little bit okay. while I talk. Sure. While you're, you're beating the frosting, 
sometimes it gets kind of splashed and it'll you know kind of splash out and everything um, so it's just a process it just takes you know exactly seven minutes to to beat and as you're beating it it's going to become more and more fluffy it sometimes kind of rides up on on the beaters as you're also you know doing the beating um, but then in the end it's just white and fluffy and it's it's a really nice light consistency okay so we thought that while we're uh, passing these seven minutes away we would tell you a little bit about a really nice trip that we just took out to Portland and Seattle to visit our best friends Melissa and David Delizer who moved out there well they were actually married four years ago so Melissa's been out there for four years um, I went out to visit her one time uh, about four years ago after they were married and this was Gary's first visit so he's going to tell you a little bit about some of the places that we visited and describe kind of some of the things that we did. And Portland is a, uh, it's a very unique city. Lots of, uh, they're known for their microbreweries. They're like one of the, they have more microbreweries in, in uh, Portland, I think, than any other city in the United States. And uh, it's like there's one about in every other street corner. And you walk into a small little restaurant and you don't even know they're a microbrewery and all of a sudden you see a little small stainless steel vat back button near the kitchen so that's kind of interesting so uh yeah we we visited some wineries too uh beautiful country you get outside of portland and the wine country the vineyards it's beautiful with uh high hills and mountains in the in the background uh mount hood is out there so when we were flying in from minneapolis to portland beautiful scenery you can't believe it uh, there's Mount St. Helens is near there, and of course Mount Rainier is up near Washington, which we also, I'll talk about that in a little bit. We went up to Seattle as well while we were out in the Great Northwest. Anyway, so uh, other things we did, um, we went up the, uh, the uh, Columbia River Gorge. It's a, it's a national, it's a scenic area, a national park, if you will, and uh, gorgeous pictures, and we'll, we'll try to get some pictures in set in this show if we, if we can... Uh, grab those pictures, but went up there, there's beautiful vistas. We went to a, uh, an organic uh, farm and they had uh, lavender. Lavender is another flower. It's one of our, our, uh, our oldest daughter who is now deceased. She loved lavender and, uh, and she, uh, we still have lavender of hers in a jar. So Ruth had actually cut some fresh lavender off of, uh, off of one of the, uh, the, the small garden area there and, uh, and we got it in a jar. We can show you that too. In, in, in a in a in a vase. So anyway, uh, so we visited there, and then we went uh, drove several uh, several miles up the the uh, Columbia River Gorge, and we went to a small little town called Hood River. And again, stopped for lunch, had a beer, had a glass of wine. There's more breweries there. Went to Cannon Beach, uh, Haystack Haystack Rock is another, uh, I guess a a famous area. A lot of a lot of pictures, people take pictures of that. So we walked along the beach. Interesting how cool it got when we got from left Portland and it's about 60 miles to the ocean. So when we got to the ocean, it was really foggy and windy and we went from like 85 degrees in Portland down to about 65 degrees out there at Cannon Beach in the Haystack, Haystack Rock area. So we took some pictures there and walked around and um, uh, enjoyed the scenery. And of course, it was a beautiful ride from Portland out to Cannon Beach and back as well. So uh, we uh, touched on that. And uh, walking around Portland, is, it's a very unique area where our friends live. It's, a, it's an established neighborhood, and they have nice little neighborhoods with, with restaurants, pizza places, and, uh, and just, uh, again, I keep using the word unique, but it's a, it's a city that that's, uh, has its own character. I guess is the easiest way to put it. So I think we're getting done As with the frosting see, here. I think it's time to go back to the frosting. Done, and it does make a real mess. We've got little splatters of frosting all over the stove and the back of the stove. So we're going to come back over here. And now we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. And we're going to beat this for <clears> two more minutes. I very often just, you know, guesstimate what I'm putting in, but I am using a, a measuring spoon. Just enough okay, to so uh, I'm do gonna this give, two minutes yeah, or I'm what? I'm going to give you two minutes on that. 
and flip it up higher. So you just want to have a nice, smooth consistency. It's going to be nice, white, and fluffy when it's done. Almost looks like plastic, doesn't it? It does. It's very, very glossy. Yeah. You know, and like many things, you don't want to overbeat it, you know, so. Um, but this has a special timing. This is you a have special to, You time. have to have a few right. minutes on this exactly. part. Yeah. So, so, our frosting, our frosting is all set to go. You did an awesome job. Thank with you. With all that beating. Thank it's you. a little bit labor intensive. It gets kind of heavy. you got to switch arms once in yeah, a while. Yeah, it's switch a little bit heavier using a stand mixer yeah, right. than just a, larger, a, a larger mixer. motor on it. Okay. Yep. So let's go over and do the cake. Okay. So when, when I'm baking and, and cooking and things, I generally don't sit down. But when I'm doing my cake decorating, sometimes it's just easier to be able to eyeball it when I'm actually sitting. So after I took my Wilton cake decorating class, this was is kind of a must when you're decorating any kind of round cakes and you want to be able to go have them moving around without you know moving your plate. So I also use this is actually like kitchen liner which I had cut out for some other you know pans that I had used one time. So to keep whatever plate that you have in place, and this has is a little pedestal. So I put the cake liner or the um, drawer liner on first and I put your cake on top. And what I had actually done, I, I did have that thought when I was first mm -hmm. frosting cakes. Years ago, I would use, it was, this is a, a cheese tray, but it's like a Lazy Susan. So you could have a Lazy Susan on your table holding your pepper and salt shakers and things right. like that. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's, it's the same concept. <clears throat> so we are gonna frost Brianna's birthday cake. So I've got it. Made the cake yesterday and with angel food, it becomes really soft, so you don't necessarily have to cover it, you know, for a long time. So I had it uncovered for a few <coughs> hours yesterday, covered it overnight, mm -hmm. and then I've had it uncovered for about the last three hours, just so, so that it's not. The purpose is that it's so it so gets it's not a little so soft, so it gets a little Otherwise crusty. Otherwise, really okay. yeah, crusty and soft. Soft. So I got a couple of of my favorite uh, cake decorating tools here. So we're just going to generously spoon on our frosting and it's got this is a, an angel food cake pan that you use so it's got the hole in the middle so we want to get the the middle part covered and like I said it works really nicely when you've got a uh, this cake tool that you can put your plate on so you can just move your cake around as you're frosting it just works really easily and you can kind of determine how much frosting you're going to have for the middle and the rest of the cake. And I've made a couple of these recently, and there really isn't any, like, fancy. You don't have to be smooth mm -hmm. when you just, you know, frost it, and, and you can just do little designs in it. And, and it just, you know, it just looks really cool, I think. Yeah. And now we're going to do just the, the size. Just the glossiness of itself. Yeah, makes so it that's when neat. I sit down so I can get a, a better feel for what I'm doing here and kind of bend over a little bit when I'm frosting. Um, let's see, back to our trip. So after we left Portland, we ended up, well, we did a brew cycle rise, like a pub, pub pedal, I think they call it around here, which was really fun. And there were um, Julie and Jack, Melissa and Gary and, and I were, were on that. And it holds, what, 12 or 15 people? Probably about that many. Yeah. So there was a young group of, of girls that, well, some of them were actually a couple of married women, but they were doing a, a bridal, um, well, they call it a hen party now. Yeah, they were It used a to be a, a bachelorette, a bachelorette party. Bachelorette party. Now they call it a hen party. So, so they were on there as well as two or four other people, I believe. So it was just a lot of fun. And that's just going to three different bars, brew pubs along the way, and you stop and have a drink and then get back on and you're actually bicycling. But if you're really lucky, like the bride un who unluckily broke her leg having a horse fall on it, um, she and one of her friends got to sit in the very back, which you don't pedal at all. And then I and tell and them where you sit. another person got to sit on like where the fender <laughs> over would the, be. Over the fender, so, so there's no, there are no pedals there. Yeah. So she got 
basically a free ride. Yeah, so you, you, uh, we had some music playing, so between um, the first stop and the, the second stop, I ended up pedaling for about right. one we song. Switched. Yeah, we switched. Yeah. And then we were stopping Give you a again. Experience. So that was just fun. Right. I mean, meeting people and, you know, just having a, a really good time. And stopped at, at different bars along the way. Deschutes was mm -hmm. where we ended up going out yeah, for lunch. The Rogue was one that we went for lunch the, one day, and the Deschutes is another larger, more famous brewery, too. And, and then, let's see, we went home. David, Melissa's husband, had actually been teaching in London for about seven weeks, I believe. So he was, was actually just returning home on that Saturday evening right. when we were there. So then we just had you know, a, a partial day to spend with him. But then that Sunday, when he was trying to recover after being up for many hours, we ended up doing a, a wine tour. Mm -hmm. So we went to four different wineries. Right. And uh, touched Seattle, hit Seattle for a couple of days. So we went up there and arrived late Monday afternoon and uh, got up there, settled into our apartment, and then we went up to, uh, went up the hill, we walked from there, uh, it was about a mile, a mile and a half walk, and went up to the Space Needle. That's kind of a must-see when you're in Seattle. It's one of their famous landmarks from the World's Fair in 1962, so it's, it's uh, interesting. When you get up to the top there, they have a, they have a, uh, a digital meter that's clicking off the number of people that have been up to the top of the Space Needle. And uh, it was at 58 million and some odd hundred thousand. So and it was just clicking away as everybody, uh, for every ticket they sold. So and 58 million, you think about built, that. Which we, I think we knew, but it was built in 1962 62. for yeah. a World's Fair. For a World's Fair, right. And uh, so you think of 58 million people have been up there since 1962. That's about one out of every, one out of five people in the United States has been up there. Of course, there's visitors from around the, <coughs> the world too, so you can't use that statistic as such but as you can see anyway, it takes a lot less time to frost than it does to boil that's right <laughs> i never <laughs> thought of it that way yet. we're not so okay. now what are we going to do so now we don't want to bore people with our trip but <laughs> <clears throat> real quickly there's chihuly chihuly gardens and glass uh museum that was beautiful that this was is a amazing a guy named chihuly i think he was a gla he's a glass artist <clears> and <throat> it was it's hard to explain but everything was just a beautiful all hand-blown glass fixtures and structures and I mean he made he makes things in pieces and puts them together like there was like a 25 foot glass tree outside it's an in indoor and outdoor type of museum and garden so that was beautiful and, and that's right next to the Space Needle so you can see two at the same time which you didn't you buy tickets uh, the same way to see yeah. the whole thing so that, that was kind of neat. Yeah but then we actually took the Am Amtrak to, um, to Port there, the, to, for, right. to Seattle but one of my favorite places of course was Pike Market. Um, Pike so that's Place. Pike Place, sorry. Pike Place Market. So that's a Pike Place is actually a street in right. in Seattle, and it's a fish market, a food market, and Pike Place. Oh, and and Starbucks has it, Starbucks has their first store As they ever see, opened, and oh yeah, that's Pike, Pike Market. That's Pike Place but Market. We, but then that was we an had, apron shop that yeah. was inside the market. And, and we had um, uh, pastries from Poroshki, mm -hmm. I believe, was yep. the, the Polish shop. Yep. We had we. Kind of had a little thing we call the trains, planes, and automobiles from the planes, <laughs> trains, and automobiles movie. From the movie. Because we started then back from Seattle to Portland, which so. took four hours on the, the train. Mm -hmm. And then we got to Portland, and David picked us up at the train station, took us, to, took the us airport, to the airport. And then that took another yeah. three and a half, yeah. four hours. Right. And then we, uh, Julie and Jack drove, we flew out of Minneapolis, mm -hmm. so we got to Minneapolis at 10 o'clock, 10 right. p.m., mm -hmm. um, Thursday night, and then Julie drove us home then the three hours, so we got home about 1.30 in the morning, and then we were heading to Cedar Rapids, Iowa for our best friends, Dick and Carol Lensing's 50th wedding anniversary. Can not say best friends? Oh, no, not best. A couple very of good our, friends. A couple of our very best friends. <laughs> Otherwise, it will hurt everybody else's feelings yeah. to say best friends. So, so that was really fun. They're <clears throat> Michael's godparents, so we decided yeah. to surprise them by making their three-tiered wedding anniversary cake. Right. So um, it was just a, a great event. We got home it Sunday was a, night. It was a busy and, 12 days yeah. between the leaving and coming home. So we found, we're back and... And just in time to celebrate time our to videographer celebrate Brianna's, Brianna's birthday. birthday. So I think yeah. Brianna needs because this is all about Brianna out right from now. behind the camera, so I can can um, give her her present her with her she's, birthday cake. She's so shy; she doesn't like doing this, but I think she should. Come, Brianna. 
<sighs> a sigh. There's a sigh. <laughs> and we get to make some some cupcakes. She actually ordered some That's cupcakes right. to treat her. Lemon, her favorite. Lemon. One of her favorites. One of her favorites. Okay. But I think Angel from Cake is probably her favorite. So there you go. happy Thank birthday, you. sweet Brianna. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you gotta do your clothes. So from a slice of heaven. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Hope we didn't bore you too much with all of our trip details. Mm -hmm. But it's been fun, again, making something special for Brianna because she is so special. So until next time, happy cooking. Lovely. Okay. It's kind of goldish blonde. <laughs>